Hi friends, I'm Adafta from Easy Approach and in this video I'm going to give you a core and fundamental concept of block pattern so that you can understand and implement it easily. But before starting the video, I would like to tell you that the video length would be longer because we'll be also implementing the uh, block pattern in the same video. But I promise you if you watch the full video, you would have a good understanding of block pattern and you'll be able to extend the knowledge or the concept uh, to become pro in block pattern. Now let's move forward. In order to learn or understand block pattern, you need to have a knowledge of these four different terms, the state, event, stream, and sync. A state, in simple words, is just the data your application is currently showing. If you already work on Flutter, you already, or you already have a knowledge of a state. But in simple, it's just the data your application is currently showing. And as you know, Flutter is a reactive framework. And whenever the state or the data changes, the UI reacts to it and re-render itself to show the latest version of your application. Now let's talk about event. Event is any action that's detected by your application. Typically, it's a user action like clicking on button. Suppose you have an application and there's a load button on it. And whenever the user click on load button, that's the action we are calling event. Now let's talk about streams. A stream, as the name suggests, can be considered as a medium through which data continuously travels. A stream is like pipe and the data traveling through it is like water. So here's a pipe and there's a data traveling through it. So this is the whole things we are calling a stream. And obviously there's a point where you actually consume or receive the data which is flowing through the stream. And that's the point we call sync. Sync can be considered as the point where you receive or consume data from a stream. So here it is, the point which we are calling sync. Now you have a knowledge of these four terms and now we can understand the block pattern easily. So block component, block pattern has three different components. The first one is UI, block and the data provider. The UI can interact with block and the block can, block can do same. And the block pattern can uh, block component actually can interact with the data provider and the data provider can interact with block. Now how it works, the UI contain all the UI uh, uh, of your application. But what block contain? Block is the business logic component and it contains all the business logic of your application. And data provider can be considered as database or your backend. And what block does? Block applies the business logic to the current state and it recreates a, the new state and send it to UI and whenever UI receive a new state it re-render itself to show the latest version so block is nothing but just it contains the business logic and based on the business logic it creates a new state and whenever it creates a new state the UI re-render itself and changes uh, and change itself to show the latest version so now let's talk about the, this business logic component in detail so that we can have uh, a good knowledge uh, uh, by understanding it with a practical example. Now I have an application which has a load button and image to be appeared here. For now there is no image appear but whenever a user click on load button the image has to be appear here. The application is a block component and it has initial state uh, which image not yet loaded. And you can see that UI is depict depicted same as the state suggests. The application can interact with the block and the block can interact with UI. And it has a data component as well, which is your database to which uh, data can, uh, can be sent and received. Now, whenever the user click on the load button, your UI or your application sends the button click event to the block as an input. And what block does, it creates a new state based on the business logic and the event which has been passed to it. So there is a, a button click event and as you know on this event we need to load a new uh, image from the data. So based on the business logic it, it receives an event and creates a new state and the new state is image has loaded and you can see the new image on the screen. So definitely the block component has a mapping function as well which actually maps the event to a new state and yeah there is a mapping function in the block so block component actually contains two different things that, that's the core things that you need to have in your block the first one is initial state which shows the initial state of your application and a mapping function which take uh, event as an input and produces a new state as an output so that's the that's two fundamental things you need to have in your block now where is source and where is a stream sorry where is a stream and where is sync so 
your blog contains or it actually contains a stream of new estates and it it accepts it takes input as an event and it recreates a new state in a stream and your application is is a sync which consumes the new state and whenever the new stream and state is created in blog stream the the, the application uh, use it or consume it and re-render itself to show the new state it actually act as a sync and your blog contains a stream of new states now we'll implement the blog pattern in our simple counter application the counter application contains three different widgets the first one is the text widget which shows the current value of the counter and there are two different buttons as well which is of increment and decrement at first before implementing the counter uh, the blog pattern uh, you need to figuring out how many events in your application are which actually change the uh, state of your application so in this application there are two different events the first one is the increment event that would change or uh, increase the value of counter by one and a decrement event that would decrease the value of counter by one so these are two different events increase and decrease that would change the state of your application so after figuring out this you need to create a class which is of block class so before doing so you need to add dependencies uh, go to pub spec file and add these two dependencies block and footer block after doing it you can now create a new file a new class so I'll naming it I'm, I'm naming it counter block and first of all I need to import here block dot dart and after doing it we need to initialize here or define here all the events that your blog can accept as input and we have uh, we have already discussed that there are only two uh, events that's uh, that can change our application or that card that can change the state of our application so I'm defining these events in enum counter events and first one is increment and second one is decrement I use here enum however in most of the cases we use classes to define events to add some more details to it however for the sake of simplicity I just use here enums now I'll define our class our, our counter block class so we'll extend it to block class and we'll just pass two different things here the first one would be the events that your counter block can accept as input which is counter events and the second thing is the data type of the output state so we'll be returning the integer value so that's the reason why I use here integer now what we'll, uh, we need to do we need to implement two concrete methods the first one is the initial state and the second one is the map event to state so now what uh, we need to pass uh, initial state here we need to return zero because we want our counter value to be zero initially when the application started and now in the map event to state uh, method we need to uh, continuously accept event as input and we need we need to continuously produce new state accordingly so before doing it we need to change it to async because uh, this function is uh, continuously accepting new inputs and continuously producing new outputs so that uh, needs to be run in a different thread so that our application run smoothly so that's the reason why i write here async and make it an asynchronous function now we need to figuring out uh, what uh, event is currently we have received so so to do figuring out it we need to add here switch and we need to pass here the event and there are two different cases the first one is the increment case so we'll do this and the second case is of decrement so this is how you can create two different cases when we encounter increment event we'll just return the value uh, which is uh, one more than the original or current state of uh, this block so how can you access the current state you just write here a state and this this is how you can access uh, the current state of your block but we need to return uh, current state plus one so how can you do we'll use yield and we'll just uh, state plus one so what's the difference between yield and return yield returns a value but does not terminate the function 
however returns returns the value and terminates the function so we need we don't need to return uh we need to don't need to terminate the function that's the reason why i use here return i use here read now uh, the part of block is now completed now we need to go in our main dot dart file here what we need to do we need to here add event to our block while uh, pressing on increment button we need to add increment event to our block or we need to pass as an input increment event to our block and in this decrement we need to pass the decrement event but how can you access the counter block in our main or die file or especially in counter screen widget so to do so you need to wrap your counter screen widget to a block provider widget and before using a block provider or to use block provider you need to import flutter block dot dart file and what i do here i use just block provider and in we need to define here builder and in builder we'll just pass build context and we'll return here the counter block And here in child we just pass the counter screen widget what this block provider will do it will pass the counter block instance to the descendant of its child i mean the counter screen would have access can access the counter block instant but how can you refer your counter block in your counter screen to do so you'll just make a new variable counter block and you'll use a block provider dot off context and here you need to pass the counter block the type of your block so this is how you can access the instance of your counter block in your counter screen now what we need to do whenever the user click in this uh, increment button we need to uh, pass or or uh, add event to our counter block so how can you do this uh, you need to access this counter block and you'll call the add function in the add function you'll just pass the increment event and same we need to do here in the decrement but we'll just pass here the decrement event so this is how you can send the event to your block so so far we have uh, sent the block uh, the event uh, to our block and we have defined the mapping function as well uh, that uh, we need to do uh, and how the uh, how our block will map the event to the new state but we haven't consumed the new state uh, so far and where uh, uh, where we actually need to use the new state is this uh, tax in this tax widget so what we'll do we'll just uh, wrap this tax widget into build sorry into block builder So block builder is the part of application that's actually affected by uh, the change in your state or by uh, uh, that's that changes after the new state uh, has been sent to uh, this uh, uh, main file so what we'll do we'll just uh, write here builder and here we'll just pass build context and the second thing is the integer state okay now we will return our tax widget And we'll just here use the state value. Okay. One thing more we need to pass here two different things. One is the counter events. Sorry, counter block. The ins the data type of your block. And the second thing is the type of the uh, output, which is int. And this integer state is uh, is actually the new uh, newly produced or newly generated state based on the business logic and uh, this is how you can uh, use uh, this state here and now we'll just run this file uh, to see uh, uh, to see the application is uh, working correctly i just run here and while clicking on increment you can see the value is incrementing by one and when i click on decrement the values Dec uh, decreasing by one so this is how you can use uh, block pattern to make your application work uh, uh, greatly and it's a it's a state management approach that's uh, recommended by google as well so this is how you can do uh, we just create a block file in which we define these two functions the uh, map event to state and the initial state 
and we need to define events as well and the second thing is this part which is actually the sync point of your application or the widget that's been affected by the change of the state so we can uh, use block builder to re-render uh, the part uh, which is affected by the change of the state we also added here uh, the events uh, to our blog the increment event and the decrement event and don't forget to use the block provider in order to provide the instance of your blog to the descendant of the child so in it, it's just a basic implementation of, uh, of block pattern there are some more complex uh, topics uh, uh, regarding this uh, uh, block pattern but this is the basic and you can extend uh, the concept uh, to become a pro that I have said earlier so in the next videos we'll be covering some more detailed uh, concepts uh, in block pattern as well so please subscribe the channel and share the video to those people that need this video thank you thank you for watching